had to squeeze himself through on his hands and knees with two footmen pushing him from behind and two pulling from the front. But he got through, through in the end. He had removed his black cloak and got rid of his trumpet and was now wearing his ordinary simple clothes. As he walked across the ballroom, he had to stoop quite a lot to avoid hitting the ceiling. Because of this, he failed to notice an enormous crystal chandelier crash when his head right into the chandelier. A shower of glass fell up in the poor BFG. Jug hammers and box, box winkles, he cried. What was that? It was Louis the fifteenth fifteenth, the Queen said, looking looking so slightly put out. He's never been in a house before, Sophie said. Mr Tim scrolled. He did direct four footmen to clear up the mess then with the disdainful little wave of the hand. He indicated to the giant that he should seat him, set himself on top of the chest of drawers on top of the grand piano. What a piss whizzing flesh bunking seat, cried the BFG. I is going to be bug as a snug in, in a rug up here. Does he always speak like that? the queen asked. Quite often. Sophie said. He gets tangled up with his words. The BFG sat down on the chest of drawers, drawers piano and gazed in wonder around the great ballroom. By gumdrops, he cried. What a, what a spliffing whoopsie room we is in. It is so gigantuous. I is needing bicirculars and, and telescopes to see what is going on at the end, at the other end. Footmen arrived at carrying silver trays with fried eggs, bacon, sausages, and fried potatoes. At this point, Mr. Tibbs suddenly realized that in order Otter to serve the BFG at his 12 foot high grandfather clock table, he should have to climb to the top of one of the tall step ladders. What's more, he must do it, do it balancing a huge worm plate on a palm of one hand and holding a gigantic silver coffee pot in the other. A normal man would have flinched at the th thought of it, but good butlers never flinch. Up he went, up and up and up, while the Queen and Sophie watched him with great interest. It is possible they were both secretly hoping he would lose his balance and go crashing, crashing to the floor. But good butlers never crash. At the top of the ladder, Mr. Tibbs, balancing like, like an acrobat, poured the BFG's coffee and placed the enormous plate before him. On the plate, there were eight eggs, twelve sausages, sixteen rashers of bacon, and a heap of fried potatoes. What is this place, your Magister? Magister, the BFG asked, peering down at the Queen. He has never eaten anything except snus cumbers. Before in his life, Sophie explained, they taste revolting. They don't seem to have stunned his growth, the Queen said. Said. The BFG grabbed the garden's 
spade and scooped up all the eggs, sausages, bacon, and potatoes in one go and shov shovel them into his enormous mouth. By goggles, he cried. This stuff is making snus cumbers taste like swatch wallet. The queen glared gallant up, frowning. Mr. Tibbs looked down at his toes, and his lips moved in silent prayer.